Hey guys, welcome back. It's Professor Hank, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to convert strings uh, and numbers into each other, essentially. Um, we're going to go through and look at how you can take a C string representation of a number, right? So, you know, you might have a C string, you know, inside of a character array, uh, one, two, dot, four, three, right? And you want to be able to convert that into an actual um, floating point number, right? That you can assign to a float variable so that way you can do further processing. Right, so I'm going to show you how to do that. Um, in addition, I'm going to show you how to take um, actual floating or actual numeric data types, so like, like an integer, an actual integer, a double, for example, and then convert that into a string object. And, uh, and the reverse of that, I'll show you how to convert a string object to um, you know, um, a num numeric data type, right? So you might have a string uh, variable that has been assigned to string 14, right? And then you want to convert that string back into an integer. So that way maybe you can add it to some other number or something, right? So I'm going to show you just a couple examples of how you can convert back and forth from strings to numbers, from numbers back to strings. Uh, and just to give you a feel for how it works, right? So to do that, we're going to look at a couple of uh, header files from the C++ library. We're going to look at uh, C stidlib and uh, the string header file, which you've probably seen before. And each of these header files has in them uh, certain functions that are defined that support this type of operation. Uh, so in C stidlib, there is A2I, A2L, A2F. Those take C strings as arguments and then return you know, the, the uh, numeric conversion, right? So A2I takes a C string, you know, maybe the C string that uh, has 127, the character's 127 in it, and then it'll return the actual integer, 127. Uh, A2L does a similar thing, but returns a long integer, A2F, uh, the same thing, but for floating point numbers. It returns a double. Uh, there's others in that library, but, um, you know, we won't have time to go through all of them. It would just take too long. Uh, so I'll provide links, uh, as I have been lately, to, you know, c++.com, where you can go and read up more about them and see what other options there are for you. In the string library, there are a bunch of, at least as a version, or as of a C++ version 11, uh, there's a bunch of overloaded uh, functions called two underscore string. And they take as uh, arguments, you know, an integer, a double, a float, a long, uh, unsigned, short, whatever. And what they do is they return a string object that contains a string representation of those things, right? So, you know, you would pass integer 12 and then what would come back would be a string that has, you know, a string uh, object that has the string 12 in it. And you could assign that to a string uh, variable. And then you can go in the other direction too, you know, using functions such as S2I. There's other functions that are similar to it in string, but S2I would take a string object and basically undo what I just described, okay? And there's others in there. So if you want to know about all the possibilities, then you're going to want to go check out, you know, the relevant link that I provide. Go to c++.com and check out the string header file and see everything that's possible, learn more, see example code, all that stuff. I'm not affiliated with c++.com or anything like that. I just think it's a fantastic resource that's uh, public and freely available to anybody who wants to check it out. And, you know, you can reuse it for whatever reason. Um, so it's a good, good size, good source, good resource. Okay, so yeah, we'll just go through a few of these and you'll get a feel for how this works in general. Then you can research on more on your own, uh, the other options that you, that you have. All right, so here we are, Visual Studio. Let's go ahead and write a program and see how uh, this behaves, right? So I'll just go through and give you examples of each of these functions and then we'll get you out of here. So C stidlib, that gives you your A2I, A2F, A2L. String gives you your string data type, your two string uh, functions and your S2I functions. And of course, IO string gives you C in and C out. Okay, so let us say that you have, um, you know, you've got a character array that uh, I'll just call it um, string. Okay, and let's say that that character array has been assigned a C string representation of a number of an integer, say like eight, six, seven. Okay, so 
this is an array that is a C string that contains the characters eight, six, seven, right? This isn't, this isn't a numeric data type, right? So you can't, you wouldn't be able to do something like this, for example, plus equals three. You can't add three to it. It's not, it's not a, a, an integer variable, right? You can't do that. So if you wanted to convert that string into something that you could do basic arithmetic on, then that's what the uh, A2I function is for. So I could come along and I could create an integer variable, say, and I could call A2I and pass it the uh, array, right? And so what will happen is, is that it will return the integer 867, which I can then assign to um, an integer variable. And then uh, I could, you know, do some math with it, okay? And uh, you'll see that it actually changes, okay? So let's go ahead and test it. So there you can see there's 870. I took the C string 867, passed it to A2I, that returned the integer 867, which I assigned to an integer variable I. Then I added three to integer variable I, and then I displayed to you the contents of variable uh, I. So that's how I can convert a C string. Now, this function A2I will accept a character array as an argument, but you could also pass it a string literal, right? So maybe 33. Okay, that'll work also. So you can see, you know, there's result 36 because I added three. I converted the string literal 33 into an integer i, added three to it, etc. Um, you could also pass it a pointer. So I could do something like this: cares uh, star p equals, um, you know, stree. Okay, and then I'll pass a p. Okay, so you can pass a pointer to a c string as well. You know, so these uh, functions will take any way you can think of uh, to, to get to or access a C string, you can uh, pass as an argument to these functions. So there's A2I, uh, A2L, basically, I mean, they're not exactly the same, but they're, they're very similar in that they're gonna return an integer. It's just that A2L is gonna return a long integer instead of a regular integer. So if you need a long integer instead of a, a regular old uh, signed integer, then you can use A2L. I'll basically do the same thing. Now, what about A2F? Well, A2F works similarly, but it works with floating point numbers, right? So um, I would need a uh, double data type. Uh, so this C string, 867 period 234525, um, I'll pass that as an argument to a2f and it's going to give me a double version okay so just like and it behaves just like with a2i uh, so you know maybe i'll divide it by two or something uh c out d divided by two okay and so then i can do whatever arithmetic operation that i that i need to with that uh, number Right, so there's half of 867.23425, right? Um, so yeah, I mean, that's, that's how I can convert that C string uh, into an actual double for further processing. Uh, okay, so uh, let's talk about these uh, string functions, right? So I can create a string variable, as you know, as you probably know, and uh, I could assign to it a string. Six, seven, right? And uh, if I want to get the integer, similar, this works similar to A2I, right? So it's just S2I, string to integer, and this is like um, alphabetic 2I, I guess you could say that's what the A, you can think of the A standing for. Um, so if I wanted to be able to take that string and uh, convert it into an integer, then I could do this. I could say uh, equals S2I and then pass it the uh, string object as an argument, and then 867 will be assigned to uh, I there. Um, and so then maybe I add one to I. Right? And then you'll see that we see uh, 868 uh, on the screen. So I converted the string into an integer, you know, and I say converted, but what I did was is uh, S2I just gives me a copy, gives me an integer 867. The original string variable hasn't changed. I mean, it's still there as a string, right? So if 
I was to print it out, you'd see that it printed out the contents of uh, that string object, right? That string variable. So the original is still there. It's not destructive. Um, it's just takes that 867 and says, oh, well, let's make that into a, let's make a copy of that, but as an integer that will return, which then you could, you know, do whatever you want to do with integers. Okay, so there you go. That's how that works. Now, what if I want to go in the uh, opposite direction? Okay, well, if I want to go in the opposite direction, then uh, you know, I could take you know, index equals five, right? And then, um, and then I could uh, use a two string function and pass to it the integer variable. Okay, and so then that'll make a, I'll take an integer as an argument, I'll return a string object, which I can assign to that string variable. Okay, and so then you know, if I see out S, you're gonna see five because that's what's being stored. There's the string five is inside of uh, that string object. But, um, you know, I can't do this because three is not a uh, not an integer, right? So you know, it doesn't make that doesn't make any sense. Okay, uh, let's see here. Oops. Okay. So you see, we've appended. You know what? what what's a heart? Five heart? I don't, I don't even know what that means. I mean, that's that's the ASCII code for something, and so it doesn't. It basically appended garbage to uh, S. I'm actually kind of surprised it even compiled because that's trying to uh, add an integer variable and an integer variable. Um, but you know, if I was to append the actual string with the character three in it, now you know, you see that you get that concatenation operation that you have with strings. Okay, so yeah, I mean, that's how you can go back in the other direction. And there's overloaded versions of a two string for all the different, uh, you know, data types. So um, I think that's everything I need to show you, right? So I showed you how to convert C strings into uh, numeric data types. And then I showed you how to um, convert, you know, numeric data types into string objects, and then string objects into, um, into numeric data types, right? So there's different versions of this, like I said, for different data types. And uh, you can check out those links that I'll provide in the description to, to see more options, okay? Okay, so that's gonna bring this video to a close. If you felt that the video was useful, please consider giving the video a thumbs up. And if you thought that the video sucked, well, then you've got that thumbs down button as an option as well. If you'd like to see more videos, if you're interested in more content from the channel, feel free to hit that subscribe button. And as usual, if you're a student of mine and you have further questions, feel free to drop me an email or to stop by my office hours. Okay, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.